So in today's class, we will talk about the concerns for innovation. I've been working for the last 20 years in this field, trying to work and see how innovation happens across various domains. I was, you know, uh, also in LNT earlier where, you know, we could see, you know, in industry, innovation happens because of a number of people in the organization. IIT Bombay is both a center of excellence in its core activities of teaching and research, as well as a key contributor uh, to high-end knowledge as well as manufacturing services. So when I moved to IITs, I also realized that you know professors have a lot of research content. Some of them are able to take it to the innovation, others are not. So then I had to also work on our own projects in IDC to see why some projects go to the market. One of the most common products in the market of our professors is the voting machine. Major problem was that we have to make it a product which is simple to operate because it was earlier a steel box in which people used to just put votes. Now it's an electronic voting machine. Now this, we wanted to remove the fear of the machine first. So it was made into a simple operative box which is as simple as TV. So this was our major achievement what we have achieved. So in that process we redefined the security in terms of not just steel and all that but in terms of visibility where we lock each part and where we seal each part in front of everybody. And I think uh, one of the big reasons it has stood the test of time till now, it works even now perfectly well, is because of this. People can, you know, slowly have been able to trust the system. And of course, it, it gave all the advantage of having an electronic system. Like it saved time. Uh, elections can be declared in a jiffy at the same time. Yeah, it doesn't take time to do that. And I must tell you, I was a student at that time, 1988. And I was watching Professor Rao and Professor uh, Ravi Povaya working on these machines. And I would see them, you know, shaping them using plaster mock-up models before they could go for the meeting with BEL to take this to the level of implementation. So they were, there's something which is very, very critical in innovation. And what are these critical aspects in innovation is when I you know, conceived my book, uh, the post design of the post box for India Post, is I came up with the concerns of innovation. I call them the Chakku 7 concerns of innovation. And these concerns are very critical in the innovation journey. And it doesn't necessarily belong to only the designer. It could be a professor who wants to go to innovation. It could be an entrepreneur who is doing innovation. It could be an NGO who is working on innovation. But the concerns are there and then only innovation can happen. So let us see the first concern. The first concern is the cause. The cause is like an activist that you are standing saying that I am going to solve this problem. So here you are really, really standing and saying that I am going to solve this problem and see to it that all the users get the benefit out of it. If I'm just saying I'm solving the problem, I'm not going to the market, right? So here, the designer is taking this cause, saying that I'm going to see to it that it's going to be implemented. And that's what is the most important aspect in my case, or in the case of the professors you saw, Professor Ravi, Dr. Manish Agarwal, and NFTDC, uh, you know, Dr. Bala Subramaniam, who decided to take the, the prosthesis, the mega process to the people at an affordable cost, so that children and people suffering from cancer do not lose their leg if they get a bone cancer, right? So the cause is becomes the very critical aspect of the total journey to begin with. And then the interesting aspect is that the context is as important as the cause. Sometimes we don't understand our context. Our context in our country for helmets is our country is a tropical, you know, very hot country. I can't use helmets coming from England. I can't use helmets designed for motorcycle racing. Today in our country, Two-wheeler riding motorcycle is necessity going to office, right? It is no longer a you know a evening ride or a passion ride or a, a trekking ride. 
like 90% of uh, abroad in Europe, it is meant for that purpose. Very hardly it is meant for the uh, commuting purpose and a necessity. So here, our contexts are very different from anybody else's context. So the context for any innovation becomes very, very critical and addressing the context and the environment becomes the next important concern in innovation. And the after you understand the context and you stand for the cause, we have noticed that a number of times we lose out on the insights. You will gain insights only when you are completely involved with the scenario and with the users. So all your issues of user studies, all your issues of ergonomics, all your issues of understanding similar products, all your issues of understanding what's happening today in the market, why people are not using or they're using, what are the current problems with the products, everything becomes a comprehension. And when you draw insights from this comprehension, you get the whole list what is critical. So without those insights, you just can't go ahead in your project. So that becomes a very important stage where you build insights, where you document studies of insights, you do videography of users, you do photo documentation of user problems and user situations and come up with the complete you know, list and then build something called the direction, which is the check. The check is to have the complete list and you want to stick to all the list and all your ideas and development should happen with that check. So we'll, we'll, and then it's nothing but a product brief and you, you know, you're actually making everything happen because you should know the direction you're going. Very early in your phase because your insights are there, your contextual information is there, your comprehension is very, very clear. You need to create a clear direction of how your design should go. And, you know, then of course, the, you know, very, very creative aspect of, you know, uh, idea generation and creating concepts. So generating ideas. Are ideas concepts? What is the difference between ideas and concepts? Ideas address a particular problem in a, in a product or in a service. Whereas a concept addresses all issues of the... So a number of ideas will form a concept. That's very, very critical in uh, conception. So you develop the ideas, you develop the concepts and you develop your final you know, concept which will match the check. Now that's why we call it a check. We, we take the check and whichever concept matches the check the most will be the concept which will be selected for your next stage of deployment, which is the crafting, which is the 6C. So here, what are you doing? You're quickly building mock-ups, three-dimensional mock-ups. You're quickly building uh, like uh, the, the prototypes because you can, do, you can do some user study with mock-ups. You can do some user study with prototypes. And you can, of course, do a lot of work when you have multiple pilot production. And then comes the connection where you go back to the user and connect with him and check whether all the aspects you started with are matching or not and maximum number of you know, <laughs> you know, users are benefited. So that's the connection happened. So this is synthesized from my industry experience, from my student project experience and from my live experience in the studio and watching other professors all across IIT. So this is the innovation journey. A number of times you repeat these processes for example, if you've gone to the users at the concept stage and the prototype stage, you fail there, you go back to your comprehension, context and check and come back again with ideas and do. So you, this whole thing is a cyclic, uh, you know, till your innovation happens. So the cause is to the concern to solve a problem. The context is to understand the use, user and the scenario. The comprehension is arriving at the design insights. The check is the blueprint of design. Remember, we talked about it. A clear plan of action. And then the conception is creating multiple ideas and combining them into concepts. And the crafting is making mock-ups, functional prototypes and pilot production. Because pilot production also is a crafting because you're spending a lot of time and effort. And then you have the connection where you're mass production and you reach a large number of users and you connect it back with the user and the benefit has reached the people at large, where you're saying that you got the benefit uh, address to the people. So let us put this on a very interesting platform. After I finished my PhD and I came to IIT Bombay, I saw this rusted post box just next to IDC. It was rusted and after some time, even the door fell down. And I said, you know, we all, you know, sitting in such great institutes, the best professors in materials, manufacturing, and management is available here. So why can't we change one product in the country? So my cause was, I'll start this journey. 
and not stop till I have large scale deployment and you know see to it that I you know solve this problem because it's like you know very unfortunate that water gets in, the letters get soggy. In fact, I myself watched some letters being very you know sort of wet in this box which was uh, you know next to IDC under a tree. So that was the first thing, the cause. And then luckily I got a student who said you know uh, he went with my cause. He said I'll work with you. And we, it was a student project and we started our journey of understanding the context. And we found out that the context is very different than what we thought. But then we found out thousands of issues about these boxes. They were difficult to open during the rainy season. The postman could not hold his umbrella when he was taking out the letters. And then the box would be wet, so the letters would be wet. The, the children can't reach the letter box because his height is very high. So multiple issues. And then we also checked. In understanding the context, you have to check the management principles of India Post. So we went to GPO to check what are they based on. And then we found out that the lowest division clerk is the one who works on these post boxes. They order post boxes on a tender system where the rates are old. 20 year old rates they give for making the boxes. So what would people do? How will they manufacture these boxes with 20 year old rate? They of course you recycle material. They will use old uh, you know, uh, steel which is already rusted. So what happens if you use rusted, already rusted steel and paint it? Will the rusting stop? Paint gets up up to some time. Paint gets go up because the rusting will start progressing a little bit, the paint will chip off and further rusting will happen. Now we have an innovation journey, right? I'm just not making a fancy looking nice, you know, post box and you know, I'm saying my job is done. Here I'm saying that I'm going to look at the total context of what is happening in this scenario so that I can make an impact and change all this. So no, so I have to involve the management of India Post also in this. Who is the head of the India Post organization? It's a government organization, right? It's a ministry. Ministry of Post, right? Who would be the head of Ministry of Post? Minister. <laughs> the minister was the head, right? Minister calls the shots. After the minister, who is there in the, in the ministry? The secretary, the IAS officers, right? The highest level is the secretary and then comes the member secretaries and then comes the postmaster generals or the chief postmaster general and then the postmaster generals. So where did he reach first? When my student reached the postmaster general in GPO. He reached somewhere around fourth level already. Till I don't reach the top level, you know what's going to happen? Implementation will not happen. And you need to understand the problems of all the levels. Otherwise things won't happen. So the context become very important. And then we understood the insights very closely and all the things I was mentioning was also the insights and the context together. So here we came up with a very, you know, even the postman does a lot of interesting, you know, he puts plastic inside so that his letters are not wet and there are flat tops in some of the boxes. This is a rocket science, the flat top will always rust, right? Water will stay over there and rust more and you know, we built a lot of insights in this and that's called the comprehension and came the brief. The brief is very clear. What is the cause I stood for? Maintenance fee post box, right? It should not rust. Why did I start the whole journey? I should not forget that. Generally, people forget. And I, I am no exception. So you will see how we failed a little, little later. Okay, so we said maintenance fee for 20 years. That is the checklist. Use of contemporary materials. Standard phenomenon of innovation. Use current materials. Don't use dated materials. Robust manufacturing, because I knew these boxes have to be really strong, right? Because they're in the field there, they should have robust manufacturing. It should be user convenient. People should be able to easily post because we're not comprehension. We realize that children are not able to post. Then it's too hot all sometimes people on pedestals. So we said this modular design. There should be a small and large box because the volumes are changing. So we need, you know, two designs and create identity for India post that came last. Generally in my all my design assignments, creating aesthetics and identity become number one, right? Now I'm on an innovation journey. So design and aesthetics, you know, came last. But to my surprise, when I offered this brief to the postmaster general along with the student, they said, we are a go growing organization. We are also, we bought a jet now for transporting of our letters. They bought a jet, they have a jet now, you know, a private India Post jet. And we want to have a new identity. So he himself asked for a new identity for the post box. And then you know, we said, yes, we'll work on that. But our you know, checklist is very clear. The you know, direction is happening from wherever it is happening. So here we have the fifth C, the conception. So we've generated a lot of ideas. You'll see online you know, more details. So a lot of ideas were developed. 
then three concepts were built right and by applying the check the the first concept was you know the most you know uh, uh, close to the requirement list from all aspects of the you know like maintenance free aspects the manufacturing aspects and the aspects of easy installation and multiple aspects the first one was the best and then went into crafting where a prototype was built by hand and then using cnc machines a small pilot of five were built and then a large pilot production of 20 were built and they were put in all, put all over the country in five different places delhi bombay patna and chennai and very very happy feedback the papers were having articles saying past imperfect future future good you know multiple things like that they were saying you know and then uh, they were saying you know new box changing the whole you know landscape of uh, india post and then the india post celebrated their 150 years celebration and they launched the box during that celebration this was the first prototype they launched so there we just reached the stage of this was the pilot stage right we reached the pilot stage of production and they launched the box and then interesting thing happened suddenly we found a lot of money in iit's bank and they said we given you this money now manufacture 200 number and give it to us and i told them i am no manufacturer i am a professor in iit i can go till pilot they said no no we can't help it we need this badly now that the ministers who are these guys sitting over there the secretary of india so we will reach the highest authority now so the secretary has inaugurated it so now they want 200 numbers and then our journey started we manufactured 200 numbers by collaborating with five different industries we collaborate jindal manufacture jindal stainless steel for the stainless steel jindal architecture for the architecture you know the the, uh, the manufacturing and the prototyping locks whom did we go to godrej very good godrej locks <laughs> we went to godrej locks because god should not rust right in the non rusting locks for bolts we went to hilti the bolts because we have a new design which is bolted to the floor earlier design was you know rusted it go into the floor so we wanted bolted design went to hilti so we went to and then for the plastic top we went to the best manufacturer at that time called g plastics and used geloy which is a combination of polycarbonate and abs very very good uh, material for the tops and we manufactured 200 number okay so this is made out of geloy very very good opening very easy to post letters height is also you know perfect lot of space for advertising on the side so you can make revenue out of advertising steel steel box scratch bright finish we also insisted on scratch bright so that no light if you have a headlamp it should shine back right in the cars so you know th that was given in and then we had a nice change of timing schedule and the location addresses and all done well and then you know i like to now take you to a new journey uh, to show you what exactly happened after this so let me now take you to the pitfalls of innovation we have done so many cases right on uh, on uh, design technology innovation so where all do we have the pitfalls let us start with the first pitfall a lot of my professors in iit we got around 500 professors do research when you do research you need to write a research paper research paper is outcome and the research paper is published in research journals which are very noted and the iit professors are given promotion if they have so many research papers in so many journals and the journals are also rated i can't put in tom dick and harry journal i had to put only in the journal which is okay. reputed so what a reputed journal will have another 10 professors on the panel will not accept the paper till it is got quality research so that is the whole yardstick on which we survive in iit bombay right so that is the whole level of research so what happens when some new material for chair was developed i developed a new plastic for manufacturing chairs or a new metal for manufacturing chairs i made a research paper and i didn't use it so it's got in the pitfall if i leap frog from the pitfall what happens in the second stage comes the design so what have we done in the design stage you made the mock up of the chair see small size use the new material which is very thin and very like lightweight and which low cost no not rusting whatever research you did you used all that research to make a chair and then 
if you have not taken it anywhere else, which is most of our 99% of the projects in IDC are in this pitfall. Right? So if you take this pitfall, look at the you know, pole vault. You need to do a pole vault. Pole vault is skilled based, right? So you need a lot of practice, a lot of uh, skills, a lot of knowledge to take any mock-up to a prototype stage to leapfrog this. Right? So now, you know, and for taking the prototype stage, I need a lot of support structures. I have special people who do welding. I have special people who do fabric stitching for the, for the cloth and, you know, special fabrics. I may have people who are doing fixtures for building the product and I just build one prototype. What's the cost of a prototype when compared to the final product? Any guess? 100 times. Very good. 50 to 100 times. Easily. Or 20 to 100 times. Because you are making one and you are putting a lot of effort because it was not existing. And I am getting that material from the research. What happens when I get material from the research? Tell me. No manufacturer is manufacturing. So I had to do all the production using a plant and a rolling mill to produce that pipe. Now we come to the working prototype. So what happens when you have a working prototype? You can test it, right? You can get a lot of users to sit on it. Check whether it is good, not good, all the things. And then you take to a pilot production. And here you are flying on a balloon. And you have a lot of support structures from various, you know, uh, departments. Like, you know, you can, you can talk to market research people. You can talk to manufacturing experts in tooling. You can talk to people who are experts in pipe bending for the chair. So, and multiple things are there. And you then leap talk to pilot production. And in the pilot production, you can look at... See how now it's become a special purpose fixtures to now make the pilot of 20 or 200 number. And what's the cost of pilot production? 20 times, 20 times to 50 times. If that is 50 to 100, this will be 20 to 50 times. So pilot is expensive because you're not producing too many and you have a lot of skilled people working on that. And then comes the next stage from pilot production to the mass production. And this is the most difficult stage. Lot of people fail over here. Most of the IIT's startups are all stuck over here. You know, from startup they need a prototype. From prototype they can somehow garner the money to do the pilot. And after the pilot is the biggest leap where you need to reach large scale to make innovation happen. And for that large scale, you need tremendous and you need an aeroplane to fly, right? See, here it is like, you know, much, much more difficult, much more expensive, right? So you have, you know, specialists in manufacturing, specialists in tool making, specialists in understanding user needs and aspirations. You are looking for a large number of users, right? Large number of users, you need to have social research, socio-economic structures coming into picture. Whether this product will run or not, they will do a lot of benchmarking. They will go and do user studies in locations and market research in locations to come and say, oh, you can invest this 100 crores in this business. I think it's a good product. And then only it will go to mass production because mass production leads a lot of tooling. And then you have, you know, multiple pieces assembled and you, you know, take it for, for production. So this is the whole, you know, journey which uh, I want to show you. So in this stage, when we did 200 numbers and it went to all, first 20 went to where? The metros. All educated people, you know, it, big, you know, journalists were happy. And when the 200 were made, the pilot was made, it went to all the areas which required post boxes and most of them were rural areas. And what happened with the boxes? Nobody recognized the boxes. They thought it was garbage bins. We said red color the top is enough. It was not enough. They wanted, they wanted a rusted box but red color. They wanted a rusted box but round top. So what was the most important thing? User perception of product. Because this is a legacy product. This product was there for ages, right? So we fell flat on our face. We failed. We fell into the ditch again, that pilot ditch. And we had to go back to our drawing boards, make the sketches again. Then now we had, to, we had a new brief, marry the old and the new. Right? There's an old form. My form can't be novel and completely out of the box. It has to be coming out of the old form so that people can recognize it. And then came this round top and red color. And then, you know, they said, 
oh, yeah, this is recognizable. And then we did an actual user testing to find out whether people will accept it as a box. And they said yes. So here we have, you know, and now by this time, the project moved to IIT Bombay. We had the Design Innovation Center. So that's the secretary of MHRD now. My secretary post already retired. New secretary came in and he was very unhappy. When you fail, unfortunately, ministries don't know that failure is good for design or failure is good for innovation. Because once you fail, you do better, right? They would not let me stand in front of them. They would say, how did you do this? How can you fail? I said, I'm also a human being. And <laughs> I'm a professor in IIT. <laughs> so I got, I got so much critic at the ministry that you know, I had to keep quiet for a couple of months and then start working on it again. And here we have the, you know, so now the project is from the Secretary Ministry of Human Resource, the innovation, the design innovation center is from the, it's a project of MHRD. So we took it under that, we developed the prototypes and we now are, you know, in the race. And then, you know, then we showed it to the Prime Minister saying that this is the box which is going to work. He was in, you know, IIT for the convocation uh, a year back. And then we showed the box to him and he liked the box. So now we are back in the India Post with the new secretary asking him to take it, take it to market. So the cause remains, right? We thought we nearly succeeded, right? So that's the interesting journey of innovation that till you don't do user testing, you can again fall in the pitfall of, you know, uh, uh, of the innovation cycle and things will not move. Okay, so that is the whole journey of the, uh, you know, the uh, pitfalls in innovation and the seven concerns of innovation. So if you look at the seven concerns, it happens in all the aspects. Here also, when the concern is there, you will, you will be able to leapfrog the pitfalls. If the concern is not there, it dies. And the concern can be from various quarters. It could be from the ministry's concern. It could be the concern of the funding agencies. Here, for example, in the case of the, uh, the like uh, processes, the funding agencies were also concerned that the product should go to the to, to the uh, to the people. Yeah. So, how did you prevent trusting? We used stainless steel and we powder coated it. We had to, see, it looked foolish, right? Stainless steel, that's why we didn't uh, paint it. We said stainless steel is a good material, it shines, it looks modern. Because remember, even the, uh, you know who will mislead you the most? The clients. They wanted new identity also. They said we should look new. We should, let's say that stainless steel is a new identity. Yeah. Is there something on the inside of box as well, which helps take out the letters easily? In fact, that's a very interesting, uh, you know, point. That point actually came from the users. They actually said, why do you tie a a bag inside, the users gave the suggestion, the first meeting itself, the, the postmaster generals across Maharashtra came. So they just grab the bag and they take it. So that suggestion was there, it's not ours, which is wonderful. So we put a bag inside with four hooks and you know, the letters fall directly in the bag and they just grab the bag, put a new bag and go away. And the bag was also recyclable, so it doesn't you know, affect us in any way. Uh, what was the reaction when they saw the red box? like uh, the post office people. In fact, uh, you know, I must tell you, you know, that after we failed once, they were not ready to accept anything other than round. And as, as new manufacturing techniques developed, round was earlier the manufacturing technique to make everything. They were using rolling processes. Today, everything you see are our boxes, washing machines, the cupboards and all. So we use folding process, which is much more cost effective in manufacturing and saves a lot of material. And then it also, you know, helps us put more volume of letters inside in a smaller volume. Round takes less volume of letters. So, you know, like after showing the red one, you know, uh, because of the older reaction, they were not very keen in taking it forward. Even after making it red, even giving it a round top. So I had to go to the prime minister to make him like it. Hoping that, you know, they would, they would, you know, they would go forward. Because the first box which was designed was designed by my professor, Professor Rathwankar. And at that time, the box was put opposite Indira Gandhi's house, the Prime Minister's house. And she liked the box and that went into production. In what stage are, are you now in the sense, like, are you still taking this forward? Yeah, we're still taking forward. We're still like, we, now we are like, you know, again requesting them, please give us a pilot order. And if they give us a pilot order, then we'll put a pilot. Then we'll again go for mass production, which is much, much larger. This time the pilot itself will be 200 and then the mass production will be maybe 20,000 dollars. Because we need around uh, 5 lakh post boxes in the country. And in the meanwhile, what's happening is technology is going forward. You need more, you know, more things in the box maybe. So we, we, we still don't know how things will move. But, you know, but this is a landmark product for them. 
this is a you know totem pole on the wall 